Hi guys, I hope you're having a really good day. Today I have a little bit more of a casual kind of chatty video. I am talking about my top five favourite books of 2018 and then also looking forward to some of my kind of reading goals in 2019. I have my tea right here. Um, I'm holding because it's a little bit chilly in here and I'm getting cold hands. So 2018 was a really good reading year for me. I actually read over 100 books, which is kind of hard for me to believe, to be honest. I did a recent video where I talked about all of the books that I read. I listed them all and I linked to reviews and things like that. So if you want to see that, do look in the information bar below this video and I'll make sure that it's linked there and you can go and have a look at the 100 books I read in the year. So that is a lot of books and obviously within that I enjoyed loads of those books that I read. In fact, I enjoyed most of them. So to then pick just five that I really really loved was actually really hard. Anyway so the first book is actually kind of a cheat because I couldn't decide between these two books and they're both by the same author so this is Olive Kittredge by Elizabeth Strout and Anything is Possible by Elizabeth Strout. If you've been watching my videos for a while you'll know that I am just an absolute mega fan of Elizabeth Strout. I think that the woman is amazing. What I love about Elizabeth Strout's writing which is what I always say that I love is that she manages to make ordinary people extraordinary. These are stories just about people each one focuses on a town in this one, Olive Kitteridge, we look at the character of Olive from several different people's perspectives, including her husband and then you know other people that live in the town. She kind of trespasses into all of their stories, but then we also hear about them and their inner thoughts and inner feelings and their kind of expectations about life and where they've fallen short and things like that. They're both very gentle, quiet novels, but absolutely gripping and amazing in their own special way. And Anything is Possible was quite similar to Olive Kitteridge in that we follow um, a town of people and we look at each family in the town or each character and kind of learn about their life and so we get like a snapshot of them. Anything is Possible actually is a follow-up book, um, a companion novel to Elizabeth Strout's previous novel My Name is Lucy Barton. So if you read and enjoyed that then you should pick this up because it's fantastic. The next book that I absolutely loved in 2018 is actually a book that I listened to and that's one thing I'd have to say about um, the past year 2018 of reading for me is that I discovered audiobooks for the first time in a big way and realised just how much I enjoy listening to audio, particularly non-fiction. I don't necessarily get along with all fiction on audio, there's something about the medium that I just don't really get along with. But non-fiction I love and the book that um, I enjoyed listening to the most and just generally loved um, is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. This is non-fiction, it's the author Maggie O'Farrell talking about different brushes that she's had with death throughout her life um, and some of them are very dramatic. Um, I kind of feel like she must have lived a very um, exciting life to have had all these experiences. It was through this memoir that I discovered a new favourite author, Maggie O'Farrell. I then went on to read um, one of her fiction novels that I found at my parents' house that they just had in, in lying around the house, which is called The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox, which I also really enjoyed. Um, and I now want to go and read loads more Maggie O'Farrell. I know that that's like saying, I've discovered Charles Dickens because so many people love um, Maggie O'Farrell and think she's a fantastic, wonderful writer, but I've never read her before, so this was my first experience and it was brilliant. The next book that I read and loved in 2018, sorry, I'm trying to balance my tea on my lap here, um, is this one here, Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This is not my first Marilyn Robinson. I read Leela, I think maybe two years ago. Um, and adored it um, and I just love this book too. What I love about this book is that it is thoughtful and gentle, it's very similar to the Elizabeth Strout novels and I can kind of see that this is something that obviously really resonates with me in books that I love. It's not like a crazy plot line, it's not really fast paced and exciting, it's about people and examining their lives and examining all those things that are unsaid in families or in relationships or in friendships. But this is just so good. It's about um, a pastor who is um, nearing the end of his life. He's not very well. He's going to die soon. He's quite an old man and he has um, a much younger wife um, who he met um, through kind of strange circumstances and they have a child together and he worries a lot about his wife and his child. What will happen to them and he's writing uh, a series of letters to his son and that's what Gilead is, the series of letters that he's writing to his son about his life and kind of choices that he's made. Um, oh, it's so good. Even just saying, <laughs> talking about it in here, I kind of think, wow, I should read this again. But um, I really enjoyed this book. The next book that I loved in 2018 was Normal People by Sally Rooney. I read the proof copy of this and just fell in love with this story completely. I also read Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney in 2018 as well, so 
It was a very sunny, really kind of year. I really enjoyed conversations with friends, but it was the love story at the heart of normal people that just absolutely won me over. I would still have my copy here right now to show you, except that my sister borrowed this book, absolutely adored it. I wanted to reread it like almost straight away. So as soon as I had lent my proof again to somebody else and they had read it, I gave it back to her. So I don't have my proof copy. If you've not read it, then it's about a boy and a girl who um, we meet in childhood. She comes from a very wealthy background and he comes from a single parent, much kind of poorer background and um, both of them live in Ireland and he's the really popular guy at school and she's kind of the social outcast but they begin a relationship in their teens that is then going to last throughout the whole of their kind of adult life and it sort of ends when they're in their mid-20s so not like straight like not, not right into adulthood but what I love is a kind of story of two people a relationship the ups and downs the way that it's broken and then put back together again and then broken again that plays out over a number of years it's just kind of incredible and I love the development of the characters I thought it was just very realistic again it was just about people and that's what I love and and their feelings and emotions and the kind of power play that exists within relationships because when they're much younger he's the one that's more popular and he doesn't want anyone to know that he has a relationship with her which is just so heartbreaking um, and then as they get older she becomes more popular and the power lies with her in their relationship. It's just so good and interesting. If you haven't read this and it sounds like something that you might enjoy, then read it, it's so good. Lastly, the fifth book that I really loved in 2018, I also don't have a copy of it here either, because again, I've lent it to somebody else to read because I enjoyed it so much, I think that they will also enjoy it. And that is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is my first Pat Barker that I've ever read and I now need to go and read all of her books. The Silence of the Girls is a retelling of the Trojan War but from the perspective of a woman. It's incredibly brutal so be very careful when you um, buy it and read it if you struggle with um, very violent scenes and kind of particularly violence surrounding women and sexual assault um, so be wary of that. Um, there are po points where I was just like destroyed by the book because it was so kind of full on but it is absolutely amazing so we follow um, the character Briesis, Briesis I think that's how you pronounce it and as the book opens her city is destroyed her husband and brothers are slaughtered in front of her and she becomes the property and slave of Achilles who was leading the whole battle and it's so interesting to kind of think about what life must have been like for somebody for a woman who was captured and then had to experience the battle in a very different way than we ever see normally portrayed in books and media I really enjoyed this book so much I found it very affecting and it makes me want to read every Pat Barker book that there is. So that is it, those are five books that I absolutely adored in 2018. What were your books that you loved in 2018? Please do leave it in a comment down below this video and let me know. But now to the second half of this video, we're just gonna talk very briefly about my kind of goals for 2019 reading wise. Last year I read 100 books, so I don't need to do that anymore. In fact, I don't want to read 100 books in 2019 because that's just too many books. That's too many books to read. I'm always trying to cut down the amount of books that I own that I haven't read yet, but I do keep acquiring more books, which is the problem you see. I will keep trying. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to whittle it down to having just one shelf, which is this shelf here behind me, of books that I are unread, but I haven't read. Um, occasionally I manage to get down to just one shelf and then I go and get load more books. <laughs> so then it doesn't really work out. And I actually have quite a lot of books at my parents' house that I haven't read either. So I'm trying to kind of like rotate them round. Basically by the end of 2019 I would love it if I did manage to have just this one shelf of books that are unread. That would be perfect. And no books at my parents' house that are hiding out that I haven't read yet. The problem is my parents are also massive bookworms. Everyone in my family is. So they often buy books and then we kind of rotate them around the family so we just end up with tons. I would quite like to do a bit of rereading in 2019. That's one thing I haven't done. Um, when I was younger I would oft I would reread books a lot um, because I love them and I haven't reread some of my favourite books in a really long time. Things like Beauty by Barbara McKinley, that's one of my faves. I've got it right here. I've actually got two copies right here, two different versions. I'd love to reread this. I Capture the Castle. Absolutely love that book, one of my faves. So yeah, I would love to reread some of my favourite books in 2019. That would be great. I think that's kind of it reading wise. I don't want to make things too difficult for myself. I did think at the beginning of a couple of months ago, I was like, shall I try and read a classic every month? But I think that's a bit ambitious. Maybe that's something for 2020. Anyway, what are your reading goals in 2019? I would love to hear them. Do leave it in a comment down below. That is everything. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to hear any more from me in the next coming week, what I'm doing or reading or writing, then you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at rose.reads.books 
or you can follow me on Twitter, the links to both of these are in the information bar down below this video. But that's it for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!